So, hey, what's going on, everyone? I'm here kicking it with my man, Jermaine Howerton. Jermaine, how are you doing today, brother? I'm good, my brother. How are you? I'm doing all right. So, Jermaine, New York sports is pretty interesting right now, especially that we have Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and James Harden playing for the Brooklyn Nets. James Harden was traded earlier this year. We also have the New York Knicks that are pretty electric. The New York Mets, a lot of people have high expectations for them. The Yankees, people have high expectations for them. So we're going to go with baseball and basketball today for the most part, and the NF- but the NFL draft is also coming up. So Jermaine, let's start off with basketball. So talk to me about your opinions of the Brooklyn Nets. All right, so we know the, the Nets offensively are an unstoppable force to be reckoned with. As soon as the Nets decided to make that decision at putting James Harden at that point guard position and letting him facilitate and having Kyrie off the ball as a shooting guard, I think they found a lot of success. Um, They should be coming out of the East depending on if they are healthy. That's if they are healthy. You got to look at Philadelphia. You got Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid having an MVP type of season, and they are both looking like defensive player players of the year. So that's a team to look out for. But if KD is injured, I don't think there's a shot that the Nets uh, get out of the out of the East. You know, no matter whether you have James Harden or or uh, Kyrie Irving. Kevin Durant is just that guy that's going to give you 26 to 28 points per game throughout the playoffs effortlessly, picking his spots on the elbows, on those wings. So, yeah, they're looking good so far, second in the East uh, behind the 76ers, but that really doesn't matter as long as they get in the playoffs and they all remain healthy. I think that uh, they'll come out of the East and they can potentially uh, win a championship this year. Well, Jermaine, I I, I don't mean to, like, go – I don't mean to go into this like like you know how I'm, how I'm about to go into it, but they're actually first in the Eastern Conference right now at, okay. 40, at 41 and 20. But Philadelphia is not far behind them at 39 and 21. But, I mean, I think that they are going to get through the first round against the Charlotte Hornets unless if Gordon Hayward, LaMelo Ball, Terry Rozier, like, do something drastic. But, yeah, you know – the Brooklyn Nets, they're up there. Um, I think that you need at least two of, like, that big three on the floor to help push you deep into the playoffs. And plus, you know, Blake Griffin is a role player. DeAndre Jordan at this point is a role player. So I, so I feel pretty confident about the Brooklyn Nets. What was your – did you see the Suns versus Nets game yesterday? You said what? Did you see the Suns versus the Nets yesterday? Actually, I did. What, what happened? Well, Kevin Durant, he came off the bench and he dropped 33 points. <laughs> and that's regular for him. But I'm telling you, I know you said, yes, they'll go deep in the playoffs, James, and uh, if it was just James and Kyrie. Yes, respectfully so. But I don't think you get over that hump without Kevin Durant. I'm sorry. I, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. Some people even say that Ben Simmons deserves to be Defensive Player of the Year. That's very debatable. Oh, it's it's debatable, but bro, he he has that. There's not a position position that he cannot guard. What was he? I, th- I believe he was like an old first team defender last year. It's just the willingness to want to play defense at six ten, having that length and having that strength and having that versatility and mobility. He's a force to be reckoned with, and we see that every night. He could guard the biggest person on the field, on me on the court, and he could guard the smallest guard, the point guard on the court. So, yeah. Absolutely no, I, I I agree with you on that. But also, what what are your opinions about what are your opinions about the Milwaukee Bucks? The Bucks, I mean, you have the pieces, you know. I, I believe Giannis is a jump shot away. You got Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday is an absolute stud, one of the best on ball defending point guards um, in the NBA. Kevin Durant has said that himself. Damian Lillard said that as well. Um, who else do they have? I believe they still have Brooke Lopez. Dante I mean, they have a lot. What Dante, was that? Dante uh, DiVincenzo and uh, Chris Middleton. Oh, yeah, Chris Middleton. Can't forget about him. Like a two-time all-star, Dante DiVincenzo, energy guy, Pat Connaughton. Like, they have those guys, but they definitely need that bench production to go into the playoffs. I mean, the Bucks are going to get there. They might uh, – I see them, like, 
in my rankings in the East, it would be the Nets, 76ers. Who, who else is in the East? The Heat aren't doing good this year. Um, the Bucks and, uh, you know, the cell, the well, the Bucks, Sixers, Nets, but also, you know, you can't like the, the Celtics are not having a good season this year, but you can't sleep on what Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown could do in the postseason. I agree. I agree. And that, that could be, that could be something that we have to look out for because the Celtics and Bucks have had playoff battles in the past where the Celtics have gotten the better of the Bucks a couple years back. But I would say Bucks at the three and then the Celtics, but the Celtics and the Bucks, I think they're, they're neck and neck. Good for bringing the Celtics up because I completely forgot about them. Yeah, you know, like I, I'll I'll be real with you, and I got and I gotta, I have a lot of respect for Jason Tatum. I really do. If hey, I I said I said this last year. If Jason Tatum was on the Los Angeles Clippers <coughs> in the playoffs last year, the Clippers would have made it to the Western Conference Finals. Yeah. So at, so absolutely, the Eastern Conference it's it's very interesting. I think that the Nick. Well, right now the Knicks are the four seed, and the, and the Hawks are the five seed. So we have to give a some. We have to give our credit to the New York Knicks, but they. But you know we'll see. We'll get more into them right after. But but also, Jermaine, back on the topic of the Brooklyn Nets, we're going down the road, and we are going to have to talk about the team chemistry. Do you think that team chemistry will be an issue? For the new, for the I'm saying for the New York Nets, for the Brooklyn Nets in the postseason. Not at all, because we didn't even see it in the first ten to twelve games of the regular season when they all started playing together. You know, Kevin Durant, James Harden, they have great rapport. Kevin Durant said Kyrie is one of the most talented players he's ever played with. You have that shooter, Joe Harris. Like Joe. they have a lot of pieces. DeAndre Jordan, Blake Griffin. On the front of KD, James Harden, and Kyrie Irving, they have that playoff experience. Let's not forget, James Harden went to an NBA Finals uh, coming off the bench with the Oklahoma City Thunder. We know Kevin Durant's championship resume. Kyrie has one under his belt. I feel like these guys are going to be in tune come playoff time and really just let the game come to them. And they also have some veterans on the team. Jeff Green is a pretty good player. DeAndre Jordan... I'm trying. I'm. I'm thinking back. DeAndre Jordan. He's been to the West. He's been to the Western Conference semifinals, but not the Western Conference Finals, along with Blake Griffin. So those two, I'm sure that they're hungry to to win a championship. So, I think that when it comes when push comes to shove, the Brooklyn Nets could be ready. Oh wait a minute. Technically, Joe Harris has been to an NBA Finals too. Really? What are you? Cleve? Was it Cleveland? Cleveland. There we go. Wow. <laughs> Joe Harris didn't really play like I, like but, but like he he he's been, he's he's been up to that level before. So yeah, I'll throw, I'll throw it over to him. I I don't know. I don't know if Lamarcus Aldridge is uh just still on the bench with the team or anything. Nah, like he that. actually he actually uh, retired, bro. For, I, I no no no. I know he retired, but I'm just saying like if he's like hanging out with the team still like you know on the sidelines, as in like. Like like wearing street clothes and like being a part of it. Oh yeah, I won't well, remember. Yeah, like you know if if like you know I'm trying to say like you know I hope that they could also like if they do win it, they could win it for Lamarcus too, because I know that he's he's a veteran out there too, or he was a veteran. I wonder if they'll give get still give him a ring. Like you, he did play what he played a handful of games, but I think they still might bless him with a ring if they do win. That's that would be something interesting to see. I mean, look. Anderson Verichow was eligible for a ring in 2016. But he was on the Warriors and the Cavs. He was eligible. He, he, but he did play more than a handful of games, though. I mean, he was a bench player, but it wasn't like, okay, I got traded to this team, played five games, retired. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, but yeah, but still, though, like, either way. I mean, I see what you're saying, but still, like. On, Lamar, on Lamarcus Aldridge's, like, aspect, you know, Anderson was going to get one either way. He yeah he was he was eligible. Well, Marcus Aldridge he I mean it's debatable about whether he played enough games or not. But with Marcus Aldridge is I mean like I think that they would be nice about that one because I mean it's a heartbreaking story. But you know he's a veteran. A lot of people have respect for him in the league. Yeah, and a very talented player. Honestly, throughout his career, probably put up like eighteen and ten. Like this guy was respected, and he was the man in Portland. I mean he he went through his trials and tribulations, but. Sad that his career got cut short due to um, health issues. Absolutely. So, 
Jermaine, let's go into the New York Knicks. Um, they're yes, currently sir. the number four seed right now. Yes, sir. Um, how, what do you think of this team, and uh, how far do you think they could go into the postseason? Uh, I think they could go first, second round. I think they could open some eyes. Honestly, it's a great young team coached by Tom Thibodeau. Tom Thibodeau does not mess around when it comes to defense. He's not one of those coaches that's going to rest the best player. If you could play 30, 40 minutes a night, your ass is going to be on that court. He just provides this energy and this vibe. It's a bunch of young guys. They're having fun. They're at the Mecca. They're, like, they're at Madison Square Garden. These guys aren't taking this opportunity for granted. I feel like with this Knicks team that we haven't seen with other teams is that chemistry. Um, just having each other's backs joking around the people that play zero minutes are just as important as the guys that play on an every night basis. And when you have that on a team, you're only going to be successful. I, I agree with you on that. Jermaine, I see videos on the Knicks' Instagram, I believe, or like some of it, some of the players' Instagram of like, even after games, like they're doing late shoot arounds and stuff like that, like that for guys who didn't play. Um, I think that Tom Thibodeau, and you know, we we also have to to remember Tom Thibodeau was actually an assistant coach on the Knicks back in the nineties too. Yes, sir. He he was, you know, Tom Thibodeau. He he's a he he has an NBA championship on his resume with the Boston Celtics, and he's been to the playoffs like dozens of times at this point within his career. I think that the Knicks did it. The Knicks did a pretty smart hire by hiring Tom Thibodeau, and he's changed the culture of the New York Knicks. The only thing that I will say is, like, you know, I just hope that he doesn't run players into the ground. That's so that's the only thing that I will say about him. But Julius Randle, he's looked pretty good, and I think that the Knicks, the Knicks could compete with the Atlanta Hawks in a seven-game series. But you know, if they went up against, I think that they could compete with. Okay, I think that they could compete with the Hawks right now, the Miami Heat, the Charlotte Hornets. Like we said, like I said, like a couple minutes ago, the Boston Celtics, and eh, that's very, a little bit more debatable about how they will come out when the when the postseason starts. So, Jermaine, do you think Julius Randle deserves to be most improved player? Absolutely, most improved player. And honestly, he's not an MVP, but he's got to be in that conversation. Like. In my opinion, when you're putting up 20, what, 20 plus points? I think like it's like 23. 10, 23, even better. Like 10 boards a game with like five dimes. Like you're working in all facets of the game with a Knicks team that has been sorry for God knows how long, you know? Um, most improved player, I think he's a runaway with that. What is his seventh, eighth year in the league? Nobody was going to expect him to you know, make his first all-star appearance, you know. He came a long way from breaking his leg in his first career game as a Los Angeles Laker to being an all-star representing the Knicks. He's definitely my most improved player of this year. I think that he could be – I think he's easily in the top 15 or top 10 for MVP, but I, but he's not going to get it. But, yeah. most, but, most improved, but most improved player, I'll definitely say so. I can't really think of uh, – anyway. Of a, of a of another player who 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 should be in the most improved conversation maybe who John Morant maybe Josh killing it but I mean he's still like we knew he was nice already you know like we knew he was there um not Jordan Clarkson he, what was that would he be six man probably he's he, Jordan Clarkson should be the six man of the year okay okay yeah I I, I can't think about anybody for um what's what's that guy the center on the Suns. DeAndre, DeAndre maybe I don't know. I don't know. I'm just pulling out names. I really can't remember. Yeah, but you know, the thing with DeAndre Ayton with Phoenix is like like is like, you know, don't forget in the bubble, I think they went eight and eight. Just barely you know. they just barely missed the postseason. Mm -hmm. And it's just that like that it's like the narrative of, you know, you get Chris Paul coming to the team. It's like, you know, Chris Paul could 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 fix anything, <laughs> you know, so so that's where DeAndre Eaton could kind, of, could kind of lose it. But if they did have a rookie point guard with the Phoenix Suns, it could like, be. Yeah, like DeAndre Eaton would look better. But wait, wait, to go back to the MVP question, do you think that Chris Paul should be in that conversation with what he's been able to do with this Phoenix Suns team? Absolutely. 
I think that there's a, I think that there are several sleepers in the Western Conference that deserve to be in the, that that deserve to be in the MVP conversation. I have to even throw Devin Booker in there. Okay. I have to give I, I, I think he should get a little bit of some more talk. And I think that even Donovan Mitchell should get some more talk. What are they? The best in the league? Best record in the league or something like that? I think so. So and that I, would definitely help this case. And I'm going to and I, and the reason why I'm gonna throw Donovan Mitchell in there is because he I, I is like even when LeBron and Anthony Davis were playing, you know. Donovan Mitchell, he's averaging over 20 points per game. I think he's in like the 23 to like 25 range. Mm-hmm. But also, they're like, like the what's the most that their second that a second that a secondary scorer on that team is averaging? What 17.4 or something like that out of like who Rudy Gobert, Joe Ingles, or or Mike Conley <laughs> or Clarkson, bro? Clarkson might be. Oh, Clarkson, yeah. I'm about to search that up, actually. Yeah, no. Clarkson, that's debatable. You know, and also, I I also have to give credit to Nikola Jokic of the the Denver Nuggets. But, Jermaine, like, you know, this, this, like, it's a very interesting thing to think about. But I'm also, but I'm also going to, to ask this question. And like this is sort of like drafts and like future like free agents and stuff. Okay. Imagine if the New York Knicks, if the New York Knicks drafted Donovan Mitchell over over Frank Nitalikina. When did Frank come off the board? Was that a le- Wait, what year? Twenty seventeen. Yeah, I, I, I know. I just don't know when. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's crazy about uh, Donovan Mitchell? He wasn't drafted by the by the. By the um, I'm saying the Phoenix Suns. He wasn't drafted by the Utah Jazz. Yeah, that's crazy. But another thing is the Knicks. We missed Stephen Curry. I'm, we missed it by one pick. Like, come on, man. Like, that's just like just our luck, you know. You were you asking just now which pick? Like, what number was Frank Nittalikina? Yeah, he was. Eight. He was eight. And Donovan was what, like, 15, 14? He was thirteen. Bam Adebayo was fourteen. Bam is doing his thing, though. Bam is – oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and Jermaine, what, what do you – now, there, there's rookie – there's draft picks. Now there's free agents. Who do, you, who do you think would be a good pickup for the New York Knicks and free agency this year? Who do we who do we have for free agency? Like whose contracts are up? Free agents. I'm very hesitant to get this guy, but Demar Derozan is on the free agency market, I believe. I don't know how that'll work because we have guards. I mean, we don't know how long D Rose will stay here. Who is playing phenomenally, by the way, in that win streak, the ten game win streak that we have. He's putting up like over 16 a game. Um, I'm looking at a list right now. Gordon Hayward, free agent. Bismack Biombo, Goran Dragic, Kawhi, Damar. Honestly, I like the nucleus that we have. But, I mean, if we need that other player, bona fide player, and I'm looking at this list right now, out of all the players that I see, if we can even try to get an interview with Kawhi, I'm taking it, honestly. Like, if, if if Kawhi goes from that L.A. market to the New York market and seeing how this team is doing, what are we, fifth in the East right now? Fourth. Fourth? And then if we have Kawhi and that nucleus around him and the energy from the young guys learning from him, I, I mean, that would be that would be interesting, but one could dream. One could dream. I, I agree with you on that. I mean, I'm thinking, first off, I want Emmanuel quickly starting next year. He's bro. We who saw this coming though? No, not a lot of people. He was drafted late in the first round. Yeah, that man. Yeah, he was getting to it. Yeah. So, like, I'm thinking, like, if I had a lineup of Emmanuel quickly, R.J. Barrett, Kawhi Leonard, Julius Randle, and Mitchell Robinson, I'm good. That bro. 
that defense too, though, because that's if we still had um, Alfred Payton. He is a pretty damn good defender. You know what I'm saying? Off the bench. So that is – that's tough. I don't know if we'll still have Nerlens off the bench for that defense too. You know yeah. he spots out. Yeah. That, I would not mind that either. Yes. Now let me ask you something. What do you think the future holds for Kevin Knox, Frank Nilakina, and Obi Toppin? Uh, Knox. I mean, Knox is still only 21 years old. You know, you've been in the league, what, three or four years. Not everybody develops at that same rapid pace, like coming out of the league, doing it like that. You know, I think Knox still needs, like, another year or two. I think that we got to be a little bit more, even more patient with him. He brings a good energy um, to the team. Neil Aquina, I've always liked Neil Aquina. I might be a little bit biased, but at that eight spot and the production that we've gotten from him, it doesn't really seem like it kind of panned out in that sense. You know what I'm saying? So, because there's other players, you know, what they're doing. So, I don't know what the future holds for Frank. Maybe if we could get something good in exchange for him or a nice draft pick, you know, maybe a second rounder or something like that. I could see that. Um, who was the other player that you mentioned? Obi Toppin? Yeah. Me in particular, I like the energy and I like him saying that he wants to play for New York and stuff like that. But we should have taken Tyrese Halliburton, in my opinion, in that draft. I mean, he, Obi Toppin's a high flyer and stuff like that. But I feel like he really needs to get in the lab with Julius Randle after this season comes to an end and really craft and work on his game. Uh, show a little bit more than uh, some of that athleticism. If he can have some of that skill and a jumper at that size, 6'9", with that length and the athleticism that he already has, watch out. Because, I mean, he's relatively old in his rookie year. I want to say he is... He's 22. Oh, he's 22. So, I mean, still relatively young, but as a rookie, you know, that's kind of old with all these guys coming out one and done and stuff like that. But I think that he has a lot lot of room to improve, and I think that he's going to come into his own over the course of his career, um, if he's with the New York Knicks going forward. I, I think that when it comes down to Frank Nittlekina, I'm agreeing with, I'm going to agree with you in terms of, you know, who could we get back if we, if we try to trade him? Kevin Knox, I think Kevin Knox, they need to find a little bit of more playing time for him. Or they, or maybe they need to try to trade him. Don't, he, at one point in his rookie year, he was Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month. Mm. So he has shown flashes in the past. And as for Obi Toppin, the only reason why I'm saying, like, you know, what does the future hold for him is because him and Julius Randle play the same position. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But you, I feel like you could change Julius you know, and put him at the three, if anything, to accommodate Obi Toppin. That's why I said Obi Toppin should elaborate. I mean, should work more on his skill set. Because Julius Randle, he could push it up, drive and kick, you know, go to the rack. Obi, not really doing that right now, but I feel like you could kind of – I feel like Julius Randle's a tweener between that three, four spot. I could, I could, I could see what you're saying. I, 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 see, I see what you're saying. You know what's funny is that when Julius Randle first signed with the Knicks, I believe that was the same summer that Al Horford signed with the Sixers. And with Joel Embiid being at center and Al Horford is actually a center or truthfully a center, I thought – I said to one of my friends, I said, you know, if I'm in the Sixers, I would have probably gone for, for Julius Randle <laughs> over Al Horford because you, you could have had Ben Simmons at the one. Then you would have had, what, um, Tobias Harris at the two, Randle at the three, and Al Horford at the four. Better, no, 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 Joel Embiid at the five. Yeah. Julius Randle at the four, my mistake. But, yeah, no, like, Julius Randle, he's, he's, he's really panning out. He made his first all-star appearance this year. Um, he's He's – He's turning into a star, and he just needs to keep on working. And you know, hopefully next year, or the near, or the or the year after, he could be more deeper into that MVP conversation. Yeah, it, as long as he keeps on improving. Yeah, he has no choice but to. He said New York saved him, so why not? You know, return that energy and bring a even more of a winning culture to New York. Yeah, I want to see um, what's his name, Kawhi Leonard, come. come Imagine, bro. We would have to. I wonder if we have to give up a good amount, though. No, no. I mean, if, if he comes in free agency. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. If he comes in free agency, 
we're not gonna we shouldn't we shouldn't like push ourselves like what we did when we got Carmelo Anthony. I don't want to do that again. So, so Jermaine, let's talk a little bit about the New York Mets. So, have you, so Jacob DeGrom, he pitched very well on, let's see, today is Monday, yesterday was Walker, Saturday was Stroman. He pitched pretty well on Friday. He had 15 strikeouts on Friday. What I mean, do you think it's fair to, to compare him to, to Tom Seaver or anything? I mean, in regards to Tom Seaver's career, what's I mean, what's his body of work like in comparison to DeGrom? Like, does DeGrom yeah, – we know he's electric. We know he's an ace. But does he even warrant that conversation with Tom Seaver? It's, well, actually, I have to – well, I kind of have to apologize because maybe I should – because maybe, like, me just saying DeGrom like that – compared to Tom Seaver could be some people could interpret it as very disrespectful and also like <laughs> I mean yeah I mean yeah but Tom Seaver he started playing well he got up to the majors when he was about 22 so Tom Seaver is a 12-time all-star he won a world series with the Mets three-time Cy Young award winner and Jacob deGrom is is looking to go for his third Cy Young he's a two-time Cy Young award winner and I I think that Jacob Degrom will have his his number retired by the Mets. Um, they're 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 both tremendous pitchers, and you know they. I think that my mother, I think my mom, my mom could know would would know an answer more to that in terms of comparisons to them. But anyways, Jermaine, just talk about you know your thoughts about Jacob Degrom and you know his career so far. Honestly, he's tough. He really is tough. Three-time All-Star, um, two-time All-MLB first team, two-time NLCY Young Award, Rookie of the Year, ERA leader back in 2018, strikeout leader both times in 2019 and 2020. He's killing it. He has that upwards trajectory of really being great. But I don't know if this is how it is in baseball. I feel like, you know how in the NBA, like if you are comparing two great point guards, but one has a ring and one doesn't, I just need to see him, you know, I know it's hard in the MLB, but I want to see him really eat up in the playoffs and uh, win a World Series championship. I want to see him do the same thing to Jermaine. The only thing is, is that the Mets need to give him some consistent run support. They gave him five runs on Friday, and then he went all nine innings, and the Mets got the win. Uh, but sometimes it's But sometimes it's unfair in Major League Baseball. But anyways, moving on. Where do you think the Mets rank in the, in the National League East? Honestly, bro, I have literally no clue. Let me check the NL East. You know, you still have team. You know, don't forget the Washington Nationals. They won the World Series back in 2019. The 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 Atlanta Braves. They took a th- commanding three to one series lead against the Los Angeles Dodgers in the NLCS last year. Don't they have Acuna? Ronald Acuna Jr. Yes. He's nice. I mean, I don't know. I'm looking at the records right now. I'm really not seeing much. Is is this the hardest like conference in the NL or? I would say it is the. Is it's it? debatable if they're the. I, I, it's hard to say because it's very early in the season. But the the NL West, they have they're between the Dodgers and the Padres. Mm. Yeah, man. Honestly, honestly, can't tell you. I feel like the Mets are a type of team that like always has that good regular season. And then when it comes to playoff time, somehow, some way, they just uh, they blow it away. Shit the bed, yeah. I mean, that's no what. Disrespect. No disrespect if you're a Mets guy, you know. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't take anything from it. 2015, they. In you guys 20, made it to the World Series, right? We made it to the World Series, but we made we made it to the World Series, but you know, we when it came down to to when it mattered, we lost. When it came down to 2016, we were in the wild card game. We lost. So I understand your perspective on that. As we, oh yeah, you could go. Oh no, I was just gonna. I was just gonna flip flip it over to the crosstown rivals of the Bronx. What are your opinions about the New York Yankees and how they're playing so far? Are the Yankees? Let's let's see what we're working on over here. Um, right now, currently, the Red Sox. They they are actually surprising fans. 
they are like the number one team in Major League Baseball. They're sitting at, well, they're probably, maybe not the number one team, but they're up there in Major League Baseball. They're sitting, well, they're sitting at 14 and nine. Nathan Navaldi, Eduardo Rodriguez, they're all playing pretty well. You know, and the Yankees, they're at the bottom of the AL East, but you know, I wouldn't even think that that's alarming. Wait, it's not a 162 game season anymore, right? No, it is 162 games. They they oh. last year they changed it down to 60 because of COVID. Gotcha. So it's a lot of game left, a lot of season left. You know, I feel like there's still hope. Uh, one of my boys, he's a huge Mets fan. He's like, oh, you guys don't have anybody. Stanton's looking trash. Uh, he's saying different things like that. Um, what pitchers do we have? Hard. It's hard to say. Um, you have Garrett Cole. <laughs> They added Corey Kluber in the offseason. Masahiro Tanaka is not there anymore. What about Severino? Is he still good? Severino, I think – I actually have not checked on Luis Severino. He's seen I, – I believe that he's injured. Because I used to watch a couple of games every now and then, and this man was shoving. I'm like, who is this guy? Yeah, Luis Severino, he hasn't pitched since 2019 because he's been dealing with injuries. Damn. And Garrett Cole's our ace, right? Yeah. Yes, he is. They, I mean, the New York Yankees, they played pretty well out in, out in Cleveland. So, got it. So, you got to give it to them in that aspect. So, hey, you know, hopefully they could turn it around. Well, actually, well, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a Yankee fan. They're sitting at nine and 12, but, you know, hopefully they could turn it around. They took it. They took, they took three out of four in the series. There you go. See, me personally, I might not be a Met fan or a Yankee fan or something like that, but at the end of the day, I'm rooting for all my New York teams. You know, Knicks, Nets, Yankees, Mets, Jets, Giants, the Bills, you know. Just to see New York thrive and have that winning culture. I want, I want a championship in New York this year. That's really all I'm asking for. I don't care who it is, what sport. Just need that to happen. Got it. So, so Jermaine, you, you mentioned the Jets. Let's go into a little bit of some NFL action. Who do you think the Jets should take with the I believe I believe they have the second overall pick. And and they gave away Darnold. Yes, they did. And they we know that Trevor Lawrence is getting taken off the board. But some of these mock drafts that I'm looking at Zach Wilson, Mac Jones is up there. He, that Wilson kid, like, I know, yes, he had a good little, uh, hold on one second. So. Like, I don't know. Like, why are, why is everybody sleeping on my boy, Justin Fields? Like, like, is, is Wilson's arm talent that electric? Like, he had one pro day, he was wheeling out through an absolute dime. I get that. But you went to BYU. You played no competition really that much. Can you come to that market in New York and be able to, you know, be at that be at the helm? You know what I'm saying? And take some criticism when the going gets tough and stuff like that. Justin Fields has that resume. He's played the best of the best. Mobile as a quarterback. That's what the quarterback is looking like nowadays, being able to run as well as being able to throw the ball. Um, Matt Jones, I really don't know too much about. I feel like he's a smart quarterback. I feel like that puts the ball in the right places, I want to say. Um, Trey Lance, I also don't know much about, but I know he's a dual threat as well. But I don't know. I like I like Justin Fields, but a lot of people are saying uh, Zach Wilson. So. I feel like people are sleeping on Justin Fields. You know, like he – he, he won the championship against Clemson this year. I feel like he's been forgotten. But, yeah, no, Mac, Mac Jones is up there. And I, I, who do I th- – I mean, it's a, tough, it's a tough say because, like, you know, it's very early in the draft. But, uh, you know, it looks like right now that the New York Jets are going to take Zach Wilson from BYU. Um, I think that they have potential – I mean, like, well, not potential, but I think that what the New York Jets need to do is that they need to work themselves back into being, well, you know, maybe, like, 
pick up a few wins, obviously, compared to last season. But they got to – it's it's still hard to say. I know that a lot of people think that they, like, improved mightily. But, we'll, but we will see. As for the New York Giants, Jermaine, who do you who do you think that they should take? What pick do they have? They have the 11th pick. I see some people saying that they should go with Jalen Waddell, the wide receiver. And honestly, if you're picking up another wide receiver, who did – the Giants got somebody from the Lions. I think it was a wide receiver from the Lions who was pretty good for them. Oh, my gosh. Hold on. Let me find this. Got to see, got to see the wide receiver core. Kenny Gallagher. Yes. And then he already has a good rapport with Darius Slayton. And then if you get a nice receiver at that 11 spot, there's no reason that um, Danny Dimes should not be, you know, having a good year. You know, I feel like the Giants are going to put everything around him in order for him to succeed. Um, I'm also wishing Saquon comes back. You know, I don't want him to ease, ease him in there too quick, but, um, I'm praying that he's all right. Um, I don't know about their defense. What, do do you still have Jabril Peppers and those boys? Um, Jabril Peppers is currently – well, he's still on the New York Giants as a safety. You know, uh, Evan Ingram, I don't know if he had some of his best year last year. He had, like, a lot of drops. I think he might have led the league with that. But all in all, I feel like – the Giants are in a good place. And if you put more tools around Daniel Jones, I feel like the the better off you'll be. And then having that running game with uh, Saquon Barkley. Yeah, I think that both New York football teams have a lot of potential. It's a very exciting time to see what's going on. But, hey, it's not – it's pretty interesting to be a New York sports fan between all the different options going on out there. Even the New York Rangers and, and the New York Islanders, even both of them are playing pretty well. Oh, yeah. H- how's the hockey? I know you're a hockey guy. Or you know a little something about hockey. How Are, are you an Islanders guy, Rangers guy? Well, Jermaine, because, I, because now I attend Hofstra University – you know, I have to I have to show more love to the New York Islanders. Uh, <laughs> um, but they're playing. But you know, they they were up there within the top two seeds. And I think that they're in. in the, I think that they're in the East Division. Yeah, but right now the Bruins they but the Bruins have been playing pretty well. The Flyers, I believe, they've been playing pretty well. And well. Not the Flyers. The Rangers, I believe that they're playing pretty well. And the Capitals are still a force with Zidane Ochara being added to that team. When did the Capitals win a ring? Was that two years ago? 2018. Oh, that was 2018. Is Ovechkin still playing? Yes, he is. Jesus, how old is this guy? Like, 40? I think that Ovechkin is about 35 or 36. Oh, not bad. Yeah, no, like, oh, there's a lot of people. I mean, there's a lot of people that could play hockey at 38, and it baffles my mind. I don't know how they do it. I saw some hockey player that literally played well into his 40s. I don't know how you do that. I don't know. Getting checked and stuff like that, the fights. I don't. The superstars, they can fight, but they don't necessarily fight, right? Like, nah, I, I, like, there's superstars that I believe that don't necessarily even have to fight because they're just too good. Feel that. Oh, what I like, but I saw like I was, I read a, I read something earlier today on the athletic that some I forgot who it was someone retired today because they had their second concussion. It's just like you know that's like the bad side of the game. Yeah. Would your parents have ever let you play play hockey, Jermaine? Honestly, I feel like they would if I really asked them. Like, mom, I really am, I am interested in hockey. You know. That's just something that has never, you know, been in my life. You know, sure, I would watch it on, like, ESPN and stuff like that growing up as a kid, watching the fights, watching them score a goal, celebrate, you know, fist pumped in the air. I thought all that was fire and the energy, throwing them into the glass and stuff. But, yeah, I just never had that surrounded by me in my life. And to see guys like uh, Dustin Bufflin, P.K. Subban, like, it, it's very inspiring, you know? And I feel like they're they're kind of breaking that uh that mold. So are you, honestly. Yeah. I mean, like, honestly, I have not – I need to 
I haven't been watching hockey as much because like I've been so focused with school lately. So 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 it's like that right now. But you know, I asked my mom sometimes. I said I said like you know, hey mom, how come you didn't let me play hockey? She was like, do you like the teeth that you have in your mouth? Yes. Well, th- well, thank you. There you go. <laughs> I hear that, Mark. <laughs> like, like, do you, do you like teeth in your mouth? Yes. There you go. Do you like? Do you like? Do you like your brain being like, like, like kept in one place? Yes. There you go. You don't play hockey. Would uh, she say the same for football, though? Yeah, she she would say the same thing. Football would would have been concussions. Hockey players tend to lose their teeth. Yeah. I, back when I when I like two years ago, and like even last year, there was a guy that I that I worked with. His name was Levi Johnson. He has missing teeth. So, like, they have, like, you, they have, like, certain retainers with fake teeth on it to, like, fill in the holes that, you know, that you don't, um, that you don't have teeth in. So, like I said to Levi, like, can I, like, see a retainer? And he's just like, okay. Then he just pulls out a retainer with, like, maybe, like, six different teeth in, like, different spots. And then, like, he shows me his mouth and he is like. <laughs> oh, nah. <laughs> like he like the chicklets were like he has he has some he had some missing chicklets in there so like you like if you saw it Jermaine you would have been like oh like you know like you know like you could like you could just see through the teeth like through like those holes like to the back of his mouth he's just like and like but but the teeth that he did have he didn't necessarily take care of so like dating stuff too like huh are the teeth like decayed like a little black stuff on it like yeah, but but also like a lot, a lot of hockey players they do dip if you know what dipping is. Yeah, I, b- baseball players dip too, right? A good amount. A lot, a lot, a lot of them dip a good amount. And then there was a, but but I'll just tell you one more one more story. There was a back when I was a, a sophomore. There was a freshman named I'm not actually I'm not gonna go with names. There was a freshman, but there was also a senior on the hockey team at the same time. So, and they both had the same tooth missing and they had a retainer with like the same tooth that they could plug, that they could plug in. What do you think they did? Don't tell me they were like doing, using each other. They were sharing the same one. It, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember, I remember seeing them like, like, you know, they're at like, like, I, I remember like a darty when like, they like, get, when like they would, uh like smile to a girl and then they would uh have like the teeth in there and then like the, and then like they would like pass it to the other guy and then like got the guy it. and then like the, like the same guy who smiled before with the teeth with the tooth in would smile again and he had the missing tooth and then like they would like split it off and then like he then like joe and oh i said his name the freshman who was the who was there that year he came out his name was joe he came out a year later he was like yeah you know i uh me and Phil, we used to like share the same tooth. I would, and then I was just like, "Oh hell no!" Like maybe sometimes they would like throw beer on it because there was like because it's alcohol. Yeah, but, but like yeah. But Jermaine, um, do you have any other stories that you wanted to ask me or like any other questions? Like you know, you could go ahead. Um, nothing, man. I'm just appreciative of getting the chance to be interviewed. You know, have a nice conversation. Yep. Brother and brother, you know, we're just trying to be great out here. Just trying to strive, you know. Absolutely. So uh, thank you for having me on the podcast, my guy. Thank you so much, Jermaine. I appreciate your time today. Of course, man. Have a good one. You too.